What's up, people? What's up, people? What's up, people? It is your boy, MM2K of PNTS Network and Hard Knock Digital Culture, back again with another episode of The Capsule. This is where we talk and take a snippet of the latest and greatest video game topics, talk to you about it, and hopes to induce your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. And boy, oh boy, oh boy, do we have a special video for you today that's really got me riled up. And that is the title of today's video is elevating game development standards, the case for Baldur's Gate 3. Um, but before we get into all this, do us a huge favor, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and rock those bells for notifications, please. So you know when we're dropping these doses. So first and foremost, I wanna say hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to be diving into a fascinating topic that's really been buzzing around the gaming community recently. We'll be discussing the impact of Baldur's Gate 3, a game that has ignited discussions about the standards we should expect from game developers. Um, and in, in this video, we'll explore why gamers are clamoring for more innovation in the AAA game industry, why games like Baldur's Gate, Baldur's Gate 3 are so exciting, and why some of the arguments against it might not hold water. So in order to do all that, we're gonna break this into several sections because I got a lot to say. Let's start with section one, dismay with lack of innovation. Look, it's no secret that over the past decade, many gamers have grown increasingly disappointed with the lack of innovation in AAA games. We've witnessed franchises churn out sequels that feel more like iterations rather than groundbreaking experiences. The thirst for new immersive worlds have left many of us yearning for more. Section two, the influence of big publishers and lack of innovation in all this. This stagnation can be attributed in part, in huge part, rather, to the influence of big publishers like EA, Take-Two, Activision, and the sorts. These publishers have often favored a cookie cutter approach, prioritizing profit over pushing the boundaries of creativity. The industry has witnessed microtransactions, incomplete launches, and repetitive gameplay mechanics becoming the norm. Section three, Baldur's Gate 3's impact and excitement. Enter Boulder Gates, uh, Boulder's Gate 3, a game that has been a breath of fresh air for the gaming community with its deep storytelling, innovative mechanics and feature complete launch. Boulder's Gate 3 has shown what's possible when a passionate studio like Larian Studios sets its sights on revolutionizing the RPG genre. It's Metacritic score of 97 and a record breaking player count on Steam speaks volumes about its impact. Section four. Destin's point of view in developer angst. Who am I talking about? Well, Destin Legary's perspective, Destin Legary of IGN that is, on the matter resonates with many gamers. He put out a video that questions why some, developer, uh, some developers are quick to defend the status quo rather than embracing the opportunity to learn from games like Baldur's Gate 3. He points out instances where players have faced issues with games like Destiny 2 and Diablo 4, and yet microtransactions continue to thrive. Section five, Brandon Sheffield's rebuttal. <sighs> On the other hand, on the other side of the debate, Brandon Sheffield has critiqued Destin's viewpoint. Now, Brandon is, is from Necrosoft. Um, he claims he's a former journalist. I, I, I don't question that. I don't debate that. Um, but he's, he, he's um, somewhat of a known name within the, the gaming space. Um, he put out an article which highlights the complexities of game development in rebuttal to Destin's point particularly in the realm of budget constraints and external pressures from shareholders. While he acknowledges the excitement around Baldur's Gate 3, he emphasizes the need to understand the broader picture as far as the complexities of game development. Section six, reinforcing Destin's point of view. Nevertheless, I stand with Destin's perspective and here's why. Baldur's Gate 3's uh, success 
showcases that gamers are hungry for innovation, storytelling, and well-polished launches. Now, while some may argue that Larian Studio has a long development cycle, the key takeaway is that the innovation thrives when developers prioritize quality over rushing to meet deadlines. So instead of lauding and trying to just solely rebut why you can't do something, even if you can't do it tomorrow, I feel that Larian has set a gold standard that should be looked at across the board. And look, publishers like making money. So if consumers start standing up and saying, look, we're not going to take it, publishers may take heed. And that's where we need our developer friends to be part of that conversation and say, you know what? This may be a better approach and a better support mechanism than the status quo. So therefore, all that takes us to the conclusion. So there you have it, a detailed exploration of the contrasting viewpoints surrounding Baldur Gates 3's impact on the gaming industry. While the debate rages on, one thing is certain, gamers have every right to expect more from developers. As the industry evolves, we can only hope that more studios take cues from games like Baldur's Gate 3 and rise to the challenge of setting higher standards. Thank you for joining me for this thought provoking journey. I encourage you all to share your thoughts in the comment section below, as I said earlier, and keep the conversation going. And as always, stay tuned for more insightful discussions right here on our channel. Until next time, have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Peace.